Hey there, people who love avoidant people and people who are avoidant. Tonight, I'm going to be showing you exactly how to get your needs met in a relationship and have your partner love it. Okay. Whether you are the avoidant partner, and I just watched a video here on this channel about avoidant women. You're welcome for that. I know a lot of you around here. I see you totally with you. I've got a lot of videos out lately about avoidant men as well. And I've got a lot of videos out there about how to get your needs met, but let's put all that together. If you're in a relationship, right? And you need to get your needs met tonight. I'm going to show you how it's going to be very clear. It's going to be very honest and very sincere and your partner will love it. So thank you for coming along on this journey with me. I am glad all of you were here. Shout out to everybody. Drop in chat and say hello. If you're here, I would love to see you. It's all pun and games. Instagrammer, good to see you in here. I've seen some of your comments. Thank you for popping in and supporting. I love it. Everybody here tonight, we're going to get our needs met. I'm going to show you exactly how to do this. It's actually simpler than you guys think. I, I, I was coaching a couple recently. I've coached a lot of couples. But I was coaching a couple recently where they did not know how to get their needs met. One of them always felt like the other was dictating their needs. And the other one always felt like their needs were being denied. Really interesting, right? Like, I always have to satisfy their needs. And the other one said, my needs are never getting satisfied. They always shut me down. This happens a lot in relationships. Attachment issues can make that happen. I'm going to show you guys exactly how to resolve that. Welcome over there in chat. Good to see you. Good to see you. Have you guys ever struggled to get your needs met in a relationship? Have you ever felt like your needs were being denied? Or have you ever felt like you weren't allowed to share your needs? Have you ever felt like other person's needs were dictated to you in the relationship and uh, drop into chat. Let me know that's ha that's me or that's happened you know, pop in or say like, you know, really tough to share my needs. Drop in. Let me know in the chat. I would love to hear that. Um, needs are a tricky thing. Needs are a tricky thing. I had a couple pop in recently where they, again, they, another couple, they had no idea how to get their needs met. And I, I said, okay, let's sit down and let's actually map out what your needs are in a relationship. Okay. I do this thing when I work with couples and I, I say, I call it the marriage contract. It sounds unsexy, but what it is, is you sit down and you talk about your exact needs, the three pillars you need in a relationship and the three things the other person needs. What's fascinating is so often these three things overlap, but what's also fascinating is nobody ever really presents things in that, in that contract that are unacceptable. Right over in chat, I see it's tough to express needs. It's me exactly got that totally eggshell sharing needs, and that's a lot of people is they walk into a relationship and they don't know what to do. That's why I sit down with my couples immediately and say, let's draft up a contract for what your relationship looks like. And I, and a lot of times they start off fumbling. Right, it's so hard to even make your needs measurable. I want to feel this. I want them to stop doing that. Right. Fails the dead organism test. Dead organism can stop something. And then it fails the subjectivity test, right? I don't know how to get my needs met. I, I, I want to feel something. The other person is going to want to deal with, well, what would make me feel that? Well, then I'm going to do that for you. I want to feel loved. Well, what would make me feel loved is somebody bringing me a hamburger. Here's a hamburger, right? It does not track at all. It does not track at all. It can be hard to share my needs. Ah, uh, yep, I got gotcha. you. And I don't have awareness of what I need. And it's hard to even make them measurable, right? Anybody in here? Anybody in here, let me know, drop in chat and put yes, if it's hard to make your needs measurable for the other person. Is it hard to make your needs measurable? Again, I want to feel this or I want you to stop doing that, but you don't know how to say what you need, right? That's why when I sit down with couples, I say, okay, I'm going to do this for you, right? Share those needs with me. Let's talk about that. I want to feel, a lot of a lot of guys will say this, Adam, I want to feel desired. Okay. When your wife hears that, she thinks that she has to walk around naked in nothing but an apron all the time, or you will never feel happy, right? And he's, he'll look at her and she's like, and I say, okay, but I get where you're coming from. As a man, you want to feel desired. Let's talk about what things she can do actively that would show that desire for you. Let's make this really measurable. And oftentimes what the guys will say is, you know, I, I just want her to be, I, I want her to actually be authentically happy to be with me. I want her to be happy during intercourse time or during bedtime, bedroom time. I actually want her to enjoy the moments that we have together. Okay, now this is measurable. Let's talk about that. I want her to see our moments together as an opportunity for fun instead of feeling like she has to take out the garbage, do chores, do the shopping. I want her to feel like moments together are opportunities for shared fun. That's ultimately a measurable, desirable thing. Okay, now we just have to get to a place where she can feel this. She can feel that. Then I come back to the wife or, or the girlfriend. And I say, 
what would help you feel like these moments are opportunities for more fun? And it's usually, how do we warm up the engine? How do we help you feel loved? How do we help you feel that intimate bond? I see over in chat, yes. Okay, measurable, 100%. Remember, subjectivity, subjectivity and dead organism test, right? The stop this doesn't tell them what to do. And the I want to feel doesn't tell them what to do. So see what I did there with that couple, right? I want to feel desired turned into... I want you to see moments together as authentic moments to have shared fun where you are just as engaged as I am. Very measurable. Now it turns it to her and we can say that's the feeling he's wanting you to have. And he's not holding a gun to your head saying you must have that feeling. Now we come back to a negotiation. And this is the piece that's missing. If you have an avoidant partner, right? You might have an anxious attachment and they could be avoidant. If you are the avoidant partner, you don't feel like most people are going to negotiate fairly with you. So the negotiation never really happens. So what we need to focus on instead is making these things measurable and then having a negotiation. Now, some people get triggered and set off by the word negotiation. The word negotiation is not, are we going to succeed? Do I get more? Do you get less? Do I get less and you get more? Negotiation in a relationship must be based based on mutual fulfillment. That is the absolute minimum requirement. It must be based on we will win together. Okay? So this comes down to what I call the yes and. Yes and. A lot of people have the yes and. Let's talk about what yes and means in a relationship with an avoidant partner, or even, even if you are not with an avoidant partner, but let's assume tonight that you are. Let's focus on that. Yes and. Okay, let's say that one of the most common issues that couples come to me with is I try to initiate and they shut me down and they say no a lot and I feel unloved and uncared for. And the other person says, well, I don't really know how to get my desire up in that regard. I don't really know how to feel that. I don't want to reject them. It just doesn't feel like we're connected right all the time. So initiate. Hey, can we do this? Can we have this fun? Sometimes what I'll say is, can we go to Disneyland, right? Because who hates Disneyland? It's a fun ride. The, the goal is, I want you to feel like we are going to Disneyland. That's the goal, right? If a man says, I want to feel desired, I want you to feel like we are going to Disneyland and we are going to ride Space Mountain together. I don't even know if I'm allowed to, to use Space Mountain here, but copyright, there, there you go. Copyright Disney. Um, I want us to go share Space Mountain together and for it always to feel like Disneyland. How can we help you feel like it's Disneyland instead of making you feel like it's grocery shopping? This is where a lot of couples with an avoidant partner or with an avoidant and anxious partner break down because they don't have that conversation. Have you guys ever had a hard time doing this? Pop in chat and let me know. Yes, right? Yes, I have a hard time having a negotiation. No, I have no problem having negotiations. Disneyland. There you, go. there you go, Gregory. Good to see you, by the way, Gregory. I'll come back in here. Yes. Okay, I see a yes. It's hard to negotiate. It's hard to even open up and build that negotiation. Hard to build up a negotiation. Okay. Um, it's very tough when you have attachment issues. Okay, lots of yeses. Negotiations get exhausting. That's the wrong kind of negotiating, right? Hey, well, we should do this. Well, right, you're holding back. You're trying to win. And you're trying not to lose. Most couples go into negotiations, maybe not even trying to win. They walk in trying not to lose. Anxious people try not to lose by having themselves getting abandoned. And avoidant people try not to lose by trying to get as much as they possibly can without feeling like they're taking advantage of the other person. They stake out extra territory. And then they can become generous after that and give some territory back because they think the other person is going to take all the territory. Very common for this, right? Win-win. Yes, exactly. It must be win-win. You must win together as a couple. Okay. I have, so in my, my attachment circle mentorship community, I teach this all the time. Win-win is the basis of a foundation. A lot of people come into that community and all they've understood is that other people try to win at their expense. So they have developed adaptation strategies. A lot of my mentees and my students in the attachment circle come in and they get they are used to having things taken from them. So when I do group calls with them, right, sometimes on the group calls, they're apologizing for bringing up needs. And I'm like, you're here to share needs. You're here, you're here to talk with me. You're here to share a problem. Let's share it. Talk with me. I'm here to help. But they apologize right? During our live Q&A call pieces, they, they apologize to each other for taking up space, right? 
they get used to things taken from them. So they think everybody is taking from everybody. And then they're afraid to ask for anything. Okay. They hide. They stay back. Avoidant people out there. Avoidant people are used to having things taken from them. Yeah, definitely had things taken, says over in chat. Exactly. They're used to having things taken from them. So it's very hard for them to learn to open up. This is why the basis of the foundation for a relationship with my coaching couples, for example, is we must build the marriage contract to make it explicit and obvious what you both want. And when you can both come back to the table and say, we both want this, they stare at it and they're like, we want the same things. Because here's what's cool. I don't just create three for you and three for you. It's each bring three, put them together. Now we have six. Six pillars of a healthy, functioning marriage where both of you are happy and fulfilled. Yes, and. Win, win. Okay? Babe, I really could use a day to myself because I'm burned out on life and humans. Is it okay if I take a day to myself and just kind of get away? Yes, and. Once you get back, I could really use some time with you because I've really missed you. That solves the negotiation for space problem that a lot of avoidant people are trying to avoid. That a lot of people are afraid of. Hey, I really need some space. And they ask their partner and the partner goes, why? What did I do wrong? Or they're afraid their partner will say, no, you're not allowed to. Okay. Yes, I don't know how to do that. That's exactly why I teach that. I, I teach it in the Attachment Circle Mentorship Community. Anybody in here who's in the Attachment Circle Community, I won't call you guys out, but can you vouch for that? Do we teach that negotiation in there? Do I guide you through that? Didn't we just do a call last night where I walked you through role play scenarios and you gave me pieces from your life and we walked through, here is how I would phrase it. Here's how I would build that negotiation. Here's the yes hand. Here's how to phrase that concern to that person. Anyone in here, is, if you guys, I won't call you out, but if you're willing, yes, he teaches negotiation there. Thank you, Jack. Inside the Attachment Circle Mentorship Community, that's why I teach that, you guys, because so many people have never seen it. If you've never seen that negotiation with your parents, you don't know how to do it. That's where you were supposed to learn it from. So I have a seven-year-old son. I, I've been married 15 years. I've got five kids. It's, it's not shocking to hear that, probably. A man who loves love, right? He's been married and has kids. Um, I have a seven-year-old son. He loves, loves comic books. What seven-year-old son doesn't, right? Loves comic books all the time. Dad, I've read these books. Can I have another one? Can you please buy me another comic book? No, I don't spend my money on you. What a brat. No, I don't say that. Goodness, no. But but many parents would hear that. I'm sorry, I don't have the money for that right now. Hey, that's foolish. Comic books are a waste of time. Maybe another time. You know, come back later. I don't have time for this right now. I'll think about it, right? Yes. Yes, I can buy you a comic book. And here's the conditions under which I would do that. Let's negotiate. You really want a comic book. Cool. Let's negotiate on that. Yes, and maybe I just bought you one. So why don't we wait a week or two? Yes, and your birthday's coming up. I'll buy you one or two for your birthday. Which ones would you like? Yes, and you've been so fantastic lately, and I've been very proud of your growth. I am happy to buy that for you. Yes, and negotiate, right? Win-win. How do I join? The website's down. Is it? I'll check really quick. If this is a troll, then I'm just going to laugh. But... Um, no, you're right. The website is down. Um, okay. You know what you can do instead? Here's what we will do. We'll get around this secure attachment. We'll make this work. If you email me, I, you're not a troll totally with you, Carlos. And I didn't think you were, but I, I just, I always double check, but thank you. I appreciate you. I good heads up. Um, here's what we can do. Email me at support at adamlanesmith.com support at adamlanesmith.com. Send me an email. Hey, Adam, I was in your live stream. I want to join the attachment circle. I really want you as my mentor. I'd love to work with you in that 100 group calls over the next year where you train me, negotiation of needs, fulfilling relationships. Please help me. Um, send me an email, support at adamlanesmith.com. I will help. Okay, I'll get you signed. We'll, we'll get you signed up. I will take care of you. 100% Carlos, and I appreciate the heads up on that. Bartering with a seven-year-old sounds like an ordeal. Uh, it's It takes work. Relationships take work. This is what prevents you from getting a divorce. Yes, and. Hey, babe. I know it's 10 o'clock at night and you're pretty tired. 
But if there's a possibility of us going to Disneyland tonight, I would really love that. Can we do that? Yes. And, <laughs> right? No. Get away from me. I, I thought I activated the fence, right? Yes. And if if we can get the engine going, I'm willing to give it a shot. Sounds like fun. Yes. I do want that, and I, I'm so exhausted. Can you give me till morning? Because I really need some sleep. Yes, and look, just, it's a it's a negotiation based on care. That's the middle of the night after snooze is far. I hear you. I hear you. Middle of the night. Hey, any chance of yes, and and then you give your and. You're not beholden where you're like you know you're forced to. This isn't about hostage taking, right? I have couples where they feel like it's hostage taking. I have couples where the avoidant partner is actually fairly on the surface with their needs. And they're very good about saying, hey, I would like this. Hey, can we do this? Hey, I would like this. Can we do this? And the anxious person, uh, I don't know. Uh, 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 and they pull back and they, well, I don't know. I think about it. Right. And they pull back and they don't give the, the and. A lot of anxiously attached partners and sometimes avoidant partners are really afraid of giving the and. They don't even know the and. Uh well, yes, we can. And this is why in coaching, I, I have to train a lot of my clients. Like, these are your needs. Let's identify your needs. Let's identify under what conditions you would love to ride Space Mountain at Disneyland. Let's talk about it, right? Let's build your and. I had a client not that long ago, um, a, a woman actually who was avoidant. Hello, avoidant women out there. Shout out to you. I had an avoidant woman who said, you know, my husband is always desiring me. And um, I, I don't, I don't, I don't fully get why I've never fully built that in that, that connection. And it hasn't really felt fulfilling. I don't hate it. He's not bad at it. I just don't get the connection. So I said, well, then we need to build he, and he wants me to desire him. And I said, then we need to build your and under what condition would you actually feel that fulfillment? Let's talk about the oxytocin pipeline, for example. Let's talk about how that's often missing and avoidantly attached women. Let's talk about how we're going to build that for you. Okay. How do we build your oxytocin pipeline so that your and is yes and, you know what, first I need to talk with you for five, ten minutes. Can I lay my head on your chest, husband, and we talk for a little while and you hold me and then we can move on to kissing, right, and the foreplay and the fun and then we can move into the main event. That's the and, right? Yes and. I need to build the engine. I need to heat the engine up a little bit first. That's perfectly okay. That is perfectly okay. There are in vanishingly few, not, not zero, but vanishingly few husbands on this earth who don't want you to warm the engine up first. Who, if you say, you have to warm the engine up first? Come on, come on lady, I'm on a time schedule. No, it, it's by and large, like, yeah, we can warm the engine. What do you need? I, I don't understand. I'm ready to go, so just help me understand what you need. And there's a tremendous number of women who are petrified to ask for the engine to be warmed up, or they don't know how to make the engine warming measurable. Again, that's that's why I teach this in my coaching practice. I have women come in and say, okay, here's how to make emotional intimacy measurable, foreplay measurable, non-sexual physical affection measurable, and we go through it. And I actually train couples on this all the time, you guys. So any couples out there who need that, please let me know. Again, email support at adamlanesmith.com. I'd be happy to work with you and show you how to do this. Um all of this is, it's skills, you guys. It's skills that none of you have probably been training. Oh, ooh, great couple. Great, great. Let me let me share you a great story on this. Um, I had a couple come in, anxious man, avoidant woman of all things. And they came in and she said, you know, I like him, but I don't really desire him, right? I like him, but I don't desire him. And he wants me to. And I'm not sure if we should be together or if we should, you know, be a couple. Because I don't feel the desire. And if I don't feel it, what am I going to do about it? Right? Any guys out there? I don't even ask you in chat. Right? But uh, guys out there, if you're if you're comfortable, friends, be, if you've ever been friend zoned, just drop friend in the chat. Let me know if that's something you've experienced. Because a vast majority of anxious men get friend zoned. Drop a friend in the chat. Or, or ladies, if you've ever had that experience and you friend zone a guy for that, drop a friend in the chat. Um, this couple, what they needed was actually for him to sort of enhance his masculine presence in the relationship. He was anxious, so he was afraid to even state his needs. Because he wasn't stating his needs, she didn't know what they were, 
And it created a lot of insecurity and instability for Hera because she wondered when he was going to blow up. She wondered when he was going to wander away. She was a, a, quite a bit avoidant, actually, on her side. And she had a hard time articulating her needs in return and what she actually needed for emotional intimacy. So what I did was I taught him, number one, how to foster that emotional intimacy for her so that she could feel it. She was like, no man has ever made me feel this way. This is incredible right? Same situation I'm in multiple, exactly. Like, this is incredible that he's able to build this for me. And then because he was able to step forward into his masculine strength and into his masculine confidence, and all that really means, guys, is very clear, direct communication and, and taking that lead in the conversation. So the conversation becomes solution focused and then having the guts to go into the negotiation and build that yes and, to build the win-win. That's really what masculine leadership and guidance even looks like in this case. Direct communication, right? All of that together. Build that together. That's what it looks like. It builds stability and it helps her respect you and understand that. So when you do that, friend zone, goodbye, hello, desire town. And that's what worked for this couple. So she went from, I don't know, I feel like a friend, feeling the friend vibe here. And he was like, no, I, I would love to be with you and actually marry you. Flip that around. Okay. He grew in his confidence and then he fostered emotional intimacy for her and she built and experienced it. So it became a yes and. Hey, yes, I can have desire for you. Yes, I actually am interested in you now. And here's what I would need in return. He was like, well, I can do that. We made it super measurable. They went through a couple of months. They got very engaged, very engaged. And they just got married. They just posted their wedding photos a couple of days ago and they tagged me in and said, Adam, thank you so much for guiding us through this process. We went from the friend zone <laughs> and lack of desire and understanding to being happily married, happier than either one of us has ever been in our life, passion and desire and, and literally newlyweds. That's the power here, you guys, of the yes and. That's the power of secure attachment. That's what I teach in here, right? The goal is not to stay avoidant and stay anxious and then just try to survive that way. The goal is to build practical, secure attachment together as a couple, right? I can see now I've always been in relations with avoidant men, a caretaker and lover. Loved, exactly. And what that is, is giving yourself away so that they won't leave you, right? And not doing negotiations. That, that's the problem here, you guys. Why is attachment issues a problem? Why are attachment issues a problem? Because they shut down the honest negotiations that would build oxytocin, GABA, vasopressin, serotonin, and yeah, a little bit of dopamine in there. All those brain chemicals. You guys have seen me talk about this a million times on my channel and on podcasts. S secure relationships where you negotiate openly. Hey, I would like this. Can we do that? Yes, and here are the conditions under which I would do that. Is that cool? Yes, we can do that. Fantastic. Shake hands. And now, of course, right? <laughs> That's, that's how that's supposed to work. That is how it's supposed to work. You're not supposed to try to decipher their signals and then figure out if it's the right time and sneak up and ambush them and hope it works. And if it doesn't, go away with your heart broken and the other person's deeply confused. That's not how intimacy is supposed to work, you guys. It is supposed to be building a connection. Hey, can we do this? Yes. And here's how we can make it work. Fantastic. Hey. It's the middle of the afternoon. Uh, we got 15 minutes. Can we do this? Yes. And the engine is not properly warmed up yet. So could we spend five minutes warming the engine up and then 10 minutes going to Disneyland? Yes, we can do that. Hey, you know, the engine's pretty cold because I was just doing my taxes. I don't think it's going to work in 15 minutes. Can we pencil this in for later this evening when we've got 45 minutes or an hour? Yes. Yes. And. Okay. Ladies out there, if you ever feel bad about rejecting your partner, right, and you don't want to reject him, or if he's been rejected a number of times and he starts complaining about how you reject him all the time and he feels rejected, it's usually because you don't have the yes and. A lot of women will start giving an excuse and say no, or I can't, I'm tired, and they're trying, they're hoping he'll understand, right? It's not an I don't want you, not usually, it's an I'm not feeling it. And I don't know how to feel it. It's an, I don't feel it right now. And he takes it as an, I don't desire you. Yes. And yes. And makes all the difference in the world. That's why I harp on this with my couples. Okay. That's why I harp on this with my coaching couples. Yes. And is the proper answer in a relationship. Not that you are forced 
to do things in relationships. That's not what I'm saying here at all, right? But yes, and. Yes, I would be happy to meet your need. And these are the conditions under which I could happily meet that need. Hey, babe, it's three o'clock in the morning and I want to go to Disneyland with you. And I want us both to enjoy it. Let's ride Pirates of the Caribbean at three o'clock in the morning. Yes, and <laughs> I am not really awake. Is there any chance we could ride Pirates of the Caribbean at six o'clock in the morning and give me three hours to be a human, like, and wake up and sleep and wake up in the morning? Okay. Right? Yes, and I'm willing to give it a shot. If we can get the engine turned on, fantastic. Let's try to turn the engine on first. Let's not just go in, you know, cold. Okay. Yes, and. Yes, and. Yes, and is the answer in these relationships. But number one, number one. Now let's go back to the beginning. What are you, what are you saying yes, and to? And here's how we're going to loop this back around to avoidant partners, right? Or people with avoidant partners, even anxiously attached people. What are you saying yes, and to? Now this is what we work on a lot inside my mentorship community, the attachment circle. Inside there, we talk about how do you get the guts to share your needs? How do you get the guts to go to your partner and say, hey, I want X. James, does yes and apply to relationships other than romantic? They absolutely can. Business partner relationships, friend relationships. You're not always beholden to say yes in those relationships, which is a little bit the difference. If you formed a partnership, you arguably are beholden to say yes to your partner. Um, but then what you do is you give to a need, a genuine need, but then you give the conditions under which that could happen. Now, realistically, and, and that's a perfect world, in every, there's not always going to be an instance, hey, I want an open, I need an open marriage. Yes, and no, you might say, well, what's the need underneath that? What's the need underneath that? So dig to find the actual need itself, right? What if I want to say no? Well, you can. Here's the magic. You don't have to stay in a relationship. If there's something that's truly incompatible, if there's something that's truly incompatible, then you can say no. It means that your relationship is incompatible. Okay? These are conversations you should be having at the beginning of the, of the relationship. And that's why most couples come to me is they didn't have these conversations at the beginning. Now they're trying to have them under tense, difficult circumstances. And they're trying to hash out an agreement when one of them is resentful, the other one's confused and afraid, and they feel like it's the end of the world. And now they ha are forced to abide by a conversation that they're now having, right? That's why they have me step in as a mediator in couples coaching. That's why people hire me is for couples coaching and mediating in that practice because they are they are trying to do something difficult during one of the worst parts of their life. That's why you hire an expert, you guys. That's why you hire a specialist to step in and make it make sense because you can't do it yourself and you don't want some Joe Schmo off the street that you've never met before who's going to take six months to warm up to the situation. You want somebody who has been there and can help you mediate the situation. Okay, over in chat. Drop me this. If you are about to have surgery and, and you could die, do you want an expert or an amateur? Drop over in chat. Expert, expert or stranger you don't know. Expert or stranger you don't know. Drop that in chat for me. Surgery about to die. Do you want an expert? I see expert. Oh, yeah. Okay. So you guys are like me. You would like an expert that would actually know how to perform the surgery and keep you from dying. Yeah. Over in chat. There you go. Expert, expert, expert. That's it. That's why I put all my credentials. Like, look, look, there's a master's degree right there. I have a master's degree. I was a licensed marriage and family therapist for many years, but now I have all the things that I teach online. I have all the skills I'll teach. I have all these stories about clients that I've helped. Of course, I want the expert. Of course, you want an expert. That's exactly why I tell you guys these stories about clients that I've, it's not just like, hey, let me brag. It's, hey, let me show you what's possible. Okay. So here's another one. Oh, I love this one. Oh, this is a good one. I had a couple come in, um, married close to 20 years. I'll, I'll keep the privacy. Close to 20 years. Um, several teenage children. And they had never, never been really on the same page with their needs. He dictated 
and he pushed aside and she was very anxious and approval seeking and she just let him do anything he wanted and barely asked for anything for the first 15 years after 15 years she started being angry and resentful that none of her needs were being met and she was being disrespected and he had no idea what other way she could possibly want anything because she hadn't, he had never experienced anything other. And that she had been for 15 years, been seemingly content to just sit there like that. 20, at 20 years, screaming matches in the kitchen till he would just walk out. He didn't even know how to negotiate or have the conversation with him. Screaming matches about my needs. No, my needs. No, my needs. No, my needs. They were absolutely convinced that this marriage was unworkable. Guess how many sessions it took me. Guess how many sessions it took me to help them go from screaming matches in the kitchen. And Adam, we are about to get a divorce. You are our last shot. Fine. We will pay your, we'll pay your fee and get your marriage rescue package because it's cheaper than getting an ugly, nasty divorce. Last ditch effort. Guess how many sessions chat? How many sessions do you think it took me to get them from edge of divorce screaming matches to smiling? snuggling, intimate, measurable goals. Yes. And how many sessions do you think? One, three, one, five, two. You guys have good faith in me. And I like this. I like this 30 minutes Two. you guys are not far off. So by the third session, okay. First session, deep assessment and some homework. Second session, right? First session, pillars of the marriage, like we talked about earlier. Second session, deep deep work and deep conversations and extensive homework. Have this conversation. Say this. Yes, and. Third session, they came in a little tense, but said, all right, Adam, you know, we had fun. We've been having fun. We had one fight in the last two weeks. A lot of couples come to me every two weeks. We had one fight in the last two weeks, but most of the time it's been good. And we've we've had we've been to Disneyland a few times and we normally don't, right? And they were smiling. And we talked and they got closer. It was so funny watching couples who sit together, right? Or couples who are like in different chairs. They're on the Zoom call with me. And they start out here and they kind of and you see them kind of like doing the 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 close, the close, and then they like pat each other, they get closer and closer by the end of the call, they're like this. And they're relaxed with each other and they're smiling and they're comfortable and they're, they look so calm and so happy, right? By the end of the third session, totally calm. I love it. I love seeing couples do that. It's one of my favorite things. Yeah, the end of the third session. Exactly. Thank you, you guys. End of the third session from screaming matches in the kitchen and about to get a divorce and then paid for the marriage rescue package to work with me. Three sessions. What's really cool, people always say, like, Adam, your marriage rescue package, it's eight sessions. If it only takes you three or four to fix us, that's cool. Well, yeah, three or four sessions to stop the screaming and be kind of happy, right? But then where do you go from there? Well, what about all the things you've missed for 20 years? The yes and. Here's the power of the yes and. It doesn't just stop the fighting and the fights and the arguments and the screaming and the, and the resentment and the shutdown and the tyranny. It doesn't just stop that. Then it's, hey, babe, I had a cool idea, but it's kind of crazy. Could we do this? You want to try this? This could be fun. Yes, and. Hey, babe, I bought this swing on Amazon. Do you want to try it? Well, yes, and. <laughs> Let's make sure it's anchored correctly. And uh, I might need a couple glasses of wine first, right? Yes, and. Yes, and is where you can start exploring opportunities. Hey, I thought of this opportunity. It might be stupid or crazy. I don't know. What do you think of this opportunity? Can we do this together? Yes, and here's what I would need to do. Here's what we would need to do to make that work. Yes, and it takes you from screaming in a bad way. To, well, to screaming in a good way. <laughs> if you want to think of it that way. I've So many of my couples have done this, you guys. If you, you don't have to be in a couple to make this work, right? A lot of people come into the attachment circle community, into my mentorship program, and they, they don't even know how to state their needs. They don't even know what their needs are, right? Some people come in and say, I don't even know my feelings. I had one cut, one person come in that, that, well, that was a while ago. I don't know my feelings more than one person. I don't know my feelings. Let's talk about that. 
let's talk about the bad feelings you're probably feeling most of the time then. You probably feel them and you probably are, are tuning them out a little bit. Let's talk about them. Then let's talk about how to get you to some good feelings. Let's talk about what those feel like and how to build them. And they were like, I can have good feelings. And then it was, now I have a partner. What do I do? Well, let's take those good feelings you were feeling and let's build them out. In fact, let's explore with your partner new things that could help you feel good. Holding hands, right? 30 to 60 minutes of catch-up time every single night as a couple. Four to six, four to four to seven nights a week as, as available. 30 to 60 minutes. Me and my wife, for example, 30 to 60 minutes each night we sit and we put on an old movie. Lately, it's been like cheesy 1980s or 1990s Batman movies, cheesy ones that we've seen and we laugh at put on a 30, 30, 60 minute kind of thing. And we hold hands and we laugh and we talk about our day. And we talk about wins. We talk about frustrations. We talk about issues. We talk about how we're going to overcome them. We talk about just how we're feeling. We talk about the marriage. We talk about those things. Okay. 30 to 60 minutes of real bonding. I need that. Okay. She needs that. That's something I said, Hey babe, I need this at nighttime. Do you need this? Yes. And Here's how we can do that, right? I need this. Is that okay? Yes, and I need that too, so let's do it. Yes, and I need to kind of turn off my brain, so let's not have deep conversations about finances. Yes, and I need to feel like a couple, so let's not just discuss the kids and their bowel movements, things you talk about when you're um, parents of young kids. Yes, and, right? Yes, and instead of drinking coffee, can we drink water or tea with no caffeine? Yes, and. Okay. Very, very, very important. Mazda, I want you to let you know your words are extremely insightful and helpful. I'm blown away. You've not yet reached the masses. I will. I will. We're going to get there. Thank you for that, though. I appreciate you. Guys, the power of yes and is overwhelming. But to get there, you must be confident in sharing your needs. You must be able to share your needs. Anxious attachment style will close your throat so you won't share your needs. And avoidant attachment style will make you swoop right past the idea of even sharing your needs because it won't even occur to you to share your needs because no one has ever cared what your needs are. Okay? So if you want the power of yes and, if you want secure attachment, that's really what secure attachment is, to ask and receive the yes and and negotiate successfully in good faith for mutual fulfillment and then to win together. That's the power of secure attachment. That's why I, that's why I push it like that. That's, that's why I encourage it. That's why I have the attachment circle mentorship community for a year long teaching of this, where I will guide you for a year in a hundred group calls That's uh, with a support community of people who understand the power of yes and, and will work with you. That's why I offer my coaching. If you need direct assistance right now in your relationship, if you are lost and lonely alone because you're not even in a relationship, you, you are, you're struggling to even initiate a relationship, right? The power of sharing those needs clearly and directly. Remember my couple that, I, that came in where he was struggling to embody that masculine confidence and it turned her desire off. Fixing that masculine confidence will, will break you out of any kind of friend zone and lead women to respect you, and then they can desire you. They can actually see you as a man in that regard. And then you enter into the relationship of yes and, and they trust you to do that with them. Overwhelmingly important. So if you are married or single and looking to get married or whatever it is, coaching, I offer special coaching, direct personal coaching with an expert. You guys all talked about that earlier, with an expert who knows what he's doing and will get right in there and take care of the problem immediately. And I offer the Attachment Circle Mentorship Community. If you want a year-long retraining on all of those skills, I am here to help. Let me know how I can help you. My email is support at adamlanesmith.com. If you drop a comment after this, I, I review your guys' comments after these because I know a lot of you guys watch these lives. But this is how you get your needs met in a relationship with an avoidant person and have them love it. If you're avoidant, this is how you get your needs met and have your partner love it. Your needs are not a burden. Your needs can lead to great fulfillment with the power of yes and. And that's only really possible when you live with secure attachment. Secure attachment is not a destination to reach. It's a series of behaviors that link together to create fulfilling relationships where you get what you need and the other person does too. And you win together. It's mutual winning. That's what secure attachment is about. So... Love you guys. This has been awesome. I'm going to turn on members only chat. Here's what we do at this point is members can ask 
any questions you guys have. I'm here to interact with you guys. I'm here to share this with you. I would love to talk with you about this topic. If you guys want to join the channel, hit the join button right there. You get priority in chat. You get priority in comments. You can join the inner circle and get exclusive information, exclusive posts and stuff for you. I have all kinds of stuff for you guys here, but hit that join button, become a member, support this channel. If you want to spread this information so I can teach even more and help support what I'm doing here. Members tonight, what questions do you have? I've seen a couple of you over in chat. I know that you are here and I'm ready to answer those questions. And in the meantime, as you guys do that, do you want to hear some more wins about people who go from insecure to secure? They learn the power of yes and. I had Jake Adams. Welcome to support the channel. Thank you for becoming a member. I appreciate that, Jake. Whatever questions you have here tonight, drop those over in chat. I am here to answer them. I'm here to talk to you. Hit me with what you've got. I would love to hear that. Thank you so much for your support. I appreciate you. Love your stuff. Thank you. Thank you so much. I love that. What questions do you have? Um, client wins. The power of sharing your, your needs. I had a guy come in. Um, he was about 35. And he, he had never, this is sad, he had never had a girlfriend. And not because he didn't want one, but because he had never been able to form a successful relationship. Now, he wasn't anxiously attached. He was actually avoidantly attached. What, what I have called ethically attached, right? The, the non-manipulative type, just very wary of humans, very wary of relationships, not concerned about getting hurt, worried about other people's intentions, had never had a girlfriend. He said, Adam, I think it's too late. What woman's going to want to date a man that hasn't a boyfriend? Something just keeps him away. I don't know what it is. He came in on my, my dating mastery coaching package. It's a five session package. It walks you through exactly how to find the partner you are meant to be with and to attract them and keep them for life. So he came in and I said, okay, let's, let's assess your relationship problems. What is keeping you separated? How do you talk on dates? Do you ask questions? Are you trying to be interesting? What's your dating profile like? Who are you attracting? When you do get into these dates, if you if you get to dates at all, he did. He got to he got he had a lot of first dates. No sec, like almost never second dates. A lot of first dates. Okay, let's talk about that. What are you doing on these first dates? Okay, how are you presenting? All right, what are you asking? What are you talking about? As we started fixing that, suddenly he started getting second dates, but then it would drop off. Okay, what are you doing on these second dates? Let's talk about that. What's the conversation like on these second dates? Let's talk about how you're presenting. Okay, then we fix that. He started getting third dates. Third dates is where the yes and starts coming in, okay? I would like this. Is that also what you want? Hey, I'm looking for this. Is that what you want? Hey, I would like to do this with you. Is that what you want? Hey, here's what I'm thinking for our relationship as we move forward. Is that what you want? Yes and, right? Negotiating, talking, communicating. He went from hadn't had a girlfriend in 35 years to found and in four sessions found an incredible girlfriend. We actually spent the fifth session. We deviated a little bit from the, the dating mastery package to talk about building into the relationship. Um, I, I tailor everything to their needs. So we talked about moving into that connection point and, and four sessions, four sessions, you guys. So if you're out there and you're afraid that you will never find a girlfriend, four sessions, we should be able to work something out. Jake, I'm really struggling. Just found out my wife is avoidant and I'm anxious. Okay. I'm struggling to determine if I should stay in the relationship. I feel off about myself and our marriage. Okay. Totally with you, Jake. Let's do this. Um, if it's cool with you, we will kind of do like a, a little bit of a, a little bit of a session here, like a mini coaching here. Does that work for you? Are you comfortable doing that? James, I do not know what my needs are, how to communicate them. Let's just start first step to change this. Um, James, look at where you are hurting. Look at where you're sad, frustrated, lonely, and then identify what would help you not feel that. Okay. What would have to change for you to have a better feeling than that? Not just the absence of that feeling, but, but yes, even the absence of that feeling, what would relieve that pain, that, that, that bad feeling that's a need. Okay. The, where does it hurt method? That's what I call that. Jake. Cool. Okay. She is avoidant. You are anxious. Um, is your wife at all open to the idea of building uh, a more peaceful relationship and, and talking about any of these things. Or if you talk about concerns, does she instantly shut it down? Your fault, angry, fight, or stomp off. Is she even open to having the conversations? Ask me, let me, let me know that. Because that determines a lot here. Is there any willingness at all? You can tell me yes or no. I'll just ask yes or no questions. It's difficult to talk to her. Is it difficult because she completely shuts you out and yells? Or is it difficult because you have a hard time articulating and then she gets frustrated so it goes nowhere? 
Those are two different things. It doesn't seem like she cares. Okay. Again, is she saying, no, get away from me. I don't care. No yelling. She's frustrated. Ah, now this is a key part. So avoidant partners who are frustrated, if they are frustrated, but still, still sort of trying, that's actually a measure of their love for you because avoidant people tend to get away when the bad feelings add up, they're out. If you're not worth it, they're gone. They will not tolerate those bad feelings. So if she's frustrated, but still connecting, she is frustrated because she doesn't understand. You guys are actually missing a key, some key framework about helping her understand what your needs are. Jake, is it hard for you to share your needs? Do you have a very difficult time sharing your needs with her, especially in a measurable way where she gets it? Like, does she th say things like, I don't get it. I don't know how to make you feel that. I'm not sure why you want that. That seems like you're, this, you're that's confusing. Does she say things like that? 110,000%. Okay. Totally with you. Then that indicates to me that she's not, she, you guys don't have a framework for making needs measurable. That's, I, I had a couple come in not too long ago, a couple of days ago, where the, the husband was like, I, I need to feel this. And the wife was, was avoidant and said, I don't know how to make you feel that. Like, that sounds like you're just trying to get a feeling. I, I don't know what to do. Right. And she was very frustrated. And he, then he was getting frustrated because he knew what he needed to feel. And he was like, why don't you help me feel this? Don't you love me? And she was like, I don't know how to make you feel that. Why is it my responsibility for a feeling? Can, what am I supposed to do? Right. That frustration. Is that sounding familiar, Jake? Yes or no? Is that kind of what you guys are experiencing back and forth? Because if it is, there's a fix for this. There is. Okay. So the fix for this is to sit down. Number one. So back at the beginning of this conversation, the pillars of a relationship. Look, what does a relationship look like to you? So I would have each one of you write down three pillars. If, if you came into coaching with me, for example, in my marriage rescue package, and I actually recommend you probably do that. If send me an email, support at adamlanesmith.com. Let's talk about the marriage rescue package. Let's get let's save your marriage. Let's just save your marriage, okay? Uh, it's going to cost you way less than a divorce. So send me an email. We'll get you connected there. Um, but here's what, here's what you and I will do. Number one, we're going to do a deep dive assessment of the relationship. Where are you guys splitting apart? Okay. It's, it's physical intimacy. It's emotional intimacy. It is just not feeling understood. It's a tremendous amount of frustration. It's her thinking that your feelings are, are out of control. It's, it's you feeling like she doesn't care about you, right? Let's talk about those breakdown points. Then let's build the six pillars of your marriage. Three things that you need to, in order to feel loved and safe and cared for in a relationship. Okay. Then hers. Yeah. All of those things. I've done this a lot of times. I've done this a lot for a long time, for many years. That's why you get the expert. Um, then she builds her three, right? Yours might be like, I need my needs to be taken seriously. And I need my needs to be cared for. Uh, I need physical, emotional intimacy with you to know that you actually care about me. I need, I need hugs. I need, I need non, non bedroom intimacy and affection as well. I need that kindness right over her. Hers might be, you know, like I need peace. I need no fighting. I, I need I need reasonable discussions. And both of those, then what we do is we put together your three needs into the six pillars of an agreed contract for your marriage. Then you guys go, we actually want the same thing. And then I say, okay, let's make those needs measurable and let's make them make sense. So then I, I have you, I, I have you both sit and look at me. And I say, pretend the other person is not here. Okay. Speak to me. Tell me what you want. And they, you know, they kind of awkward. They say, nope, me, talk to me. And you talk to me and you share your needs. Well, I, I want this. And I say, okay, now when I hear that, I get it, but other people will not. So let's figure out how to make that more measurable. You want to feel X. Talk to me about the specific things that can make you feel X. Well, not when they do this, when they don't do that. Nope. Dead organism tests. What can they do? Okay. Well, this, this, and this. Ah, now, why is that important to you? Well, I need this and this. Okay, how often do you need it? I need this and this, you know, this often, about this often. Okay, if you did, if that happened for you, how would how would you feel? Well, I would feel this. What would that lead to? Well, I, I'd be willing to do this. Fantastic. That Number one, boom, we have made your needs measurable and it makes sense. Usually the avoidant person's like, that's why you want that? Oh, okay, I can do that. That's not a problem. And you're like, I've been begging for 10 years. And they're like, well, I get it now, right? This this is the goal, you guys. This is this is why it actually pays off to work with an expert. So James, I'm sorry, not James. I, I combined your name, Jake Adams, James for short. Jake, 
send me an email. Okay. Let's, let's get you guys into that marriage rescue package. I can build this for you guys and then take you guys from frustrated and arguing and not sure that this marriage is going to work to not just like peaceful and happy, but then let's start building from there. What have you guys missed? What are the cool things about marriage that you guys have missed? What are the yes and opportunities that you guys haven't explored yet? Okay. Yes and opportunities. Let's take you guys from, I don't think this marriage is going to work, to what cool new opportunities can we explore together as a couple, right? We're going to talk about oxytocin bonding. We're going to talk about vasopressin bonding. I will show you actually, if she's avoidant, I'll show you how her, and I'll probably actually show her how her bedroom drive works. Most avoidant women don't actually know how their bedroom drive works and they don't know why their drive is low. They usually are on a dopamine pathway. So they're only wanting it maybe once a week and only as va only usually as validation. Um, it's, it's more like cranking one out kind of to them, but it's also more like partner maintenance and the partner's like, I don't want this. This is uncomfortable. This is, I don't want somebody who's just here, like closing their eyes and thinking of England, right? So to speak. And, and that's, that's where that goes wrong. So Jake, you want to build that? Send me that email support at adamlanesmith.com. We'll get you into the marriage rescue package. We'll take care of it. I keep thinking, pulling a divorce because I'm worried she might be NPD. If she is, we'll figure it out. We'll figure out where to go. I don't diagnose anybody, but we I, I will tell you flat out if it's not fixable, I'll tell you flat out. But if she's frustrated and not yelling, that's a pretty good indication that she's probably just avoidant, but she's trying to work with you and doesn't understand. Again, most avoidant women have very low oxytocin levels, really. And so they don't have the oxytocin pipeline giving them that intimacy and that affection. It doesn't warm up the engine very easily. Bedroom stuff becomes very, very transactional in that way, or, or mechanical is a better way to put it. Um, everything feels transactional and they start to shut down after years and you'll start to feel miserable and alone in your marriage. And then yes, when you try to kind of like argue for your feelings, they'll shut you down and it will feel like they have NPD or something like that because they keep pushing back on you because they don't understand. So they feel attacked. I've seen that tremendously all the time, you guys, all the time. So if you want to fix this, Jake, I'm here to fix it. I'm ready to fix it. We can take care of this in a few sessions. I have a package just designed just for the two of you. So shoot that to me and let's work on it. Anybody else in here who's struggling like this, I'm happy to work with any of you guys, not just Jake. Jake, I'd love to work with you, but you're charming, by the way. Thank you for letting me, thank you for letting me use you for some, for some coaching here, and I hope that was helpful. Um, but anybody in here who's struggling like this, by all means, send me an email. Let's get you taken care of, okay? Hire the expert, way cheaper than a divorce, and let's build, build you a marriage that's not just better than divorce. Let's build you a relationship that's joyful. Let's build you a relationship that's like going to Disneyland once a day, right? Let's build you a relationship where you smile when you walk into the room with each other because you're about to share five minutes together and it's going to be a great five minutes. Let's build you that marriage. I'll brag. Like my marriage, where at the end of the day, I'm looking forward to it right now. I'm looking at my clock. It's eight o'clock. In another hour, I've got about a 30 to 60 minute window with my wife where we're going to sit. We're going to watch some Batman, the movie, the old movies, and we're going to hold hands. We're going to laugh. We're going to share some time together this evening. It's going to be wonderful. So I'm looking forward to that. I'm looking forward to spending time with the partner that I love. I want you guys to have that too. If you guys want to go from edge of divorce to Batman, uh, I'm here to help. When I visit your website, I get the error. The domain has expired. Is this your domain renew now? I'm going to pop in there and take care of that then. That must have been something went wrong. So I will pop in and take care of that immediately. Thank you for letting me know. Shoot me an email, support at adamlanesmith.com, and I'll be there. All right, you guys. Thank you so much for sharing this evening with me. Make sure you drop comments down below or email me, and I will take care of you. And we'll get everything managed and taken care of together. Okay? Thank you so much. I'll see you guys again real soon. Oh, really quick. Will you be able to help a male-male couple? Yeah, I can help anybody. I'm here to help.